What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this. <sighs> Beautiful, delicious, smoky, fatty, rendered, amazing, point only fatty brisket. That's right folks, I separated the best part of the brisket and cooked it by itself. <sighs> Coming up! This is a brisket. Jeez, big boy. Pat it dry. So what I got here is a big old brisket, USDA Prime. Picked this up at my local HEB. And uh, yeah, this thing is pretty gigantic. Weighing in at just about 19 pounds. Usually I'll try to find the smaller ones, but this is all they had. And it looks pretty good, nice and fatty. And luckily we're only cooking half this thing today, so I'm not really too worried about how gigantic it is. But before we get to that stage, we gotta get this thing trimmed up like we always do, starting with this big chunk of decal fat on the backside. Oh, just follow that natural separation. Woo, that's a big one. Then come and clean up the back a little bit. Any of this fat or silver skin you feel like taking off. You've seen me trim plenty of briskets at this point, folks. And if you're new to the game, I've got some dedicated videos that'll go into a little bit more detail than what we're gonna talk about today. But basically the name of the game here is just making it look pretty aerodynamic and getting rid of some of the fat, but not too much fat. Flip it over. Man, it's been a while since I cooked a gigantic brisket like this. But clean up this side a little bit. Got some fat back here we don't need. I might have to take that all off. We'll revisit that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Shave down this point muscle just a little bit. Because there's a whole bunch of fat under here. Don't need that. And this fat cap is actually looking pretty good. But we'll take that down just a little bit. It's getting warm out, folks. Gotta move quick when you're trimming a brisket on a hot day. Chut scrape. And then lastly, we'll give this thing some shape. Not much lean on this brisket. And there we go. Beautiful looking brisket, nicely trimmed up. Round this off a little bit. And now it's time to cut this thing in half. And that's because we're only cooking the point today, which you may have seen me do before in my brisket burn end video, where I basically trimmed the brisket, bisected it right on this fat seam here, giving me the flat and the separated point. And that's what we made the burn ends out of. And in that video, I said, we may have to revisit this cut at some point. And today is that day. So now to go against my better nature and cut this brisket into two separate muscles. Starting right on the fat seam here, we're simply just gonna get right on in there. You know that deco fat seam right here that's basically what we're gonna follow it feels weird I know just keeping an eye on this layer of fat over here and slowly but surely we get this thing taken off Ooh. and if you look at it this point muscle kind of thins out till right about there and there we go. That is our flat, our underside of the brisket. Tried to leave a fat cap on this in case we want to cook this thing up, but it'll likely go into sausage or burger making. And now we've got just this point in all its glory. I'm gonna go through and take some of this fat off the bottom side, although I am tempted to leave it on, get a double bark situation going on. But that's where y'all come in. We need some more experimenting with this kind of thing. And the reason I wanna do this is one, because everybody loves fatty brisket. And by doing just the point here, we're gonna get exclusively fatty brisket, but also it's much smaller. So this might be a nice little hack for those of you that aren't trying to feed a crowd and just want a little bit of only the best brisket. And there we have it folks, point muscle, looking pretty clean on the back. I might keep going, take some of this off, but we can really see the beautiful striations in that meat. Fat cap still intact. It looks like a tiny little brisket. Ha, <laughs> love it. And as for our rub today, I'm gonna go on with my preferred brisket rub, which is two parts 16 mesh black pepper on sale now at shopchuds.com, two one part diamond crystal kosher salt, and one half part granulated garlic. And just get that all nice and mixed up. Starting on the underside, not going on with any binders today, but we're just gonna hit it with a nice, even, heavy coating all the way around. Get that padded in nice, nice. Flip it over, same thing on the top side. And as always, folks, please don't forget the sides. Rookie move, especially on a cut like this where we're gonna get double the burn ins. Looking good to me. Let's fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. We're gonna go fat cap up, fatty side towards the fire, even though technically this whole thing is the fatty side, but thick end towards the fire at the very least. And we're gonna cook it like a brisket. You know, probably start out a little lower, around 250, build up some nice bark, build up some nice smoke, and then gradually build up temps. And we'll see how long this thing takes to cook. So we'll check back in in a little bit. 
We're about six hours into this brisket cook, and let's see how this little guy is looking. Ooh, not bad. Got some beautiful bark on there. Nice even coverage. No pooling or anything lifting up on us. Let's see what we're reading. Ooh, feeling real tough. Wow, 145 still. 160 in the point, 155. All right, we gotta let this rock for another little bit. Honestly, I thought this was gonna cook quicker, but I guess it is like the toughest part of the brisket, so. Bump the fires up to around probably 275, 280, and we'll keep on rocking. This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Father's Day is right around the corner, folks, and Ridge makes gift giving easy with their biggest sale of the year. If you're unfamiliar with Ridge, they make these super minimalist, really sturdy wallets, and I've personally been carrying one for over a year now. And this thing can hold up to 12 cards, making life super easy. But if you want to carry cash, they've got these big heavy duty money clips on the back, but I'm often wearing these really light shorts, so I use this to just clip right into my waistband. And because that clip is so strong, I never have to worry about this wallet falling out or losing it somewhere. But if you don't like money clips, they also make this little strap that you can stick some cash in or whatever you want. You can also replace that money clip with this one that's designed to hold an air tag, which means you can track your wallet wherever you lose it. And they come in over 30 colors. I like to rock the stainless steel one. I think I'm gonna switch to this carbon fiber one because it's a lot lighter and it matches my phone case. And they also have a bunch of cool accessories like this little coin tray that you can slide in there. Great for holding a couple of quarters for the toll booth. And they're all designed with RFID blocking materials, which means you're protected from digital pickpocketers. Ridge also has a variety of other products, including pocket knives, and rings, and my favorite new one is this little key case, which again has a nice sturdy pocket clip on the back as well as a lanyard hole. And holds anywhere from one to six keys and kind of works like a little flipper pocket knife where you can just kind of pull your keys out like that, eliminating jingle, making life super easy. Not to mention these rings that they sell, either rubberized or steel, are great for the barbecue dad in your life who doesn't want to get brisket grease all over their wedding ring. Also, you can get 30% off when you buy the key case and the Ridge Wallet together. So if you're in the market for some EDC gear, head to RidgeWallet.com using my link in the description box of this video where using my link you can save 10% off. Again, I'll have the link in the description box of this video and save 10% using my link. Thank you, Ridge. All right, this brisket point has finally come up to about 175, 180 internal. Ooh, feeling hot, but looking nice and barky. It really does look like a tiny brisket, kind of like a pork brisket, but we're gonna go ahead and give this the old foil boat. Beautiful, so cute. And now back on the pit, this goes for probably just another hour or so until it's time to pull this thing off. And just like that, out this thing comes. It's been about an hour and a half. This barky little brisket point is rocking about 200 degrees internal, probing like butter. So now I'm gonna let this rest for a little bit and pop it into my toaster oven at 150 degrees overnight. One long rest later. Let's see how this little brisket point came out, shall we? Ooh, feeling nice and floppy. Nice and tender. Oops. Oh no. Don't mind if I do. It's looking good. It's looking barky. It's got so much flop and wiggle factor to it. And it really does look like a tiny little brisket. Kind of like a pork brisket, really. But if you guys could just feel the uh, flop factor on this, I think we're in for a good bite, folks. And now for the moment of truth, let's go ahead and slice into this thing. And this is the real best part about this recipe is we're gonna slice this way, the whole way, giving us maximum burn ends and just these gigantic slices of fatty brisket. We're just gonna go for it. Crunchy bark. Look at that strip of burn ends, folks. Come on. Oh yeah, oh that looks beautiful. Got that little accordion effect going on. Nice and tender, but still, how you doing? Holding up. Go ahead and slice this up. I'm telling you, if you ever have to do a barbecue event where you're just handing out samples, this is the way to go about it. Cause look at all those beautiful, perfect little fatty burn ends. Oh, someone called the cops on me because this is so good. Boop, boop, boop. Let's go for a slice, shall we? Nice thick cut, all fatty brisket point slice. Ooh, look at the marbling on that folks. It is a little dry on this end. I probably could have trimmed that a little bit better, but right there, ooh, so floppy, so barky. Beautiful fat render on there. Look at that fat cap, just exactly what you want to see. Go for a few more. It's also the longest slice of brisket I've ever seen on the internet. I tell you what, I mean, come on folks. Would you just look at it? Looking good to me. This end definitely shredded a little bit, but ooh, nice and tender. Just pulls right apart. Doesn't look like a normal brisket slice, but it looks like the best part of a brisket slice. Nice and floppy. Oh, I gotta dive in. I mean, really folks, what's not to like about this? Just the best slices of the best part of the brisket. Cooked to perfection. Nice and barky, nice and moist. Oh, I gotta dive in. I'm telling you folks, this is the new brisket recipe of the summer because we don't have any lean brisket to worry about. It didn't stall out our cook. We don't have to worry about which relative we're gonna 
give the dry stuff to. Shaved a few hours off the cook and we're only left with what we want. I mean, come on, what is not to like about that? Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you expect? It's phenomenal. Nice, smoky, fatty, barky, foil boat, crunchy bark, just super tender. It's everything you want. And the fact that we got some bark on the underside of the point, when else are you gonna see that? Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. And all these burn ends, come on. I didn't even finish slicing this yet. We got a whole nother row of burn ends on this side. Although I am curious, let's see how those came out. Yeah, looking pretty good to me. Usually you can't get burn ends off of both sides because there's a huge chunk of lean, but that's looking pretty good to me. Boop. Ow. Mm. Burn ends for everybody. Gotta love it. Mm, 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 mm. So barky, so tender. And there's such big strips too, you don't see it. Ready? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, beautiful stuff. I know I keep saying it, but you know, we're just cooking exactly what we want. Oh, it's so good. It is unique eating it without the lean underneath. Don't miss it. And it cooked so much quicker than having to worry about that whole thing, making two muscles cook at the same rate, as opposed to just this. I wish you could just buy this muscle because like I'm saying, this is the new cut this summer. That's what I'm cooking for people. Especially because I make sausage and burgers so often that I can keep that lean in the fat and it'll not go to waste. Love it. Ooh, that's a bite for Papa. Mm. This is the perfect cut for a classic barbecue fold over. We'll get a freshie. Boop. Oh, look at that. Oh, lovely stuff. Throw that on a little bit of white bread. I mean, come on. A little bit of Leroy and Lewis beet barbecue sauce. Also now at LeroyandLewisBarbecue.com. Couple of pickles. If I had some raw onion, I'd throw that on there as well. And there you go. A beautiful fatty brisket fold over. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm. It really doesn't get much better than that, folks. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. Mm, just a perfect bite. Mm. I gotta say, folks, this truly is a fantastic bite. If you're anything like me, I'll often take a slice of fatty brisket and just pull this top muscle off, just because that's the best part. And this is so much better than that because we got smoke, seasoning, and bark on both sides. It's just so juicy and so tender. Oh, I love it. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. All right, y'all, that is it. That is how to split a brisket in half, cooking only the point side to leave you with nothing but some beautiful, barky, fatty brisket meat and really just accentuate that quintessential bite of Texas barbecue. I highly recommend giving this one a try, especially if you make a lot of burgers and sausages like I do. This is a great way to go about it. But also, if you're feeding a smaller crowd, like if it's just you and your partner or a small family, this is a great way to go about cooking a brisket and only get the best pieces but not end up with seven to 10 pounds of meat at the end of the day. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.